Hey everyone, today we'll be talking about one of my favorite bands, Spoon, if you could see the t-shirt here. I've been listening to them all week. I've distilled it to the essence of Spoon, the top 10 best Spoon songs. I'm ready to share it with you now. I'm calling it undeniably the top 10 best Spoon songs. And for a little bit of fun, I also have an overrated song as well. We'll get to that at the end. But for right now, let's talk about the 10 best. Okay, so number 10 is the lead song from Gimme Fiction, The Beast and Dragon Adored. Man, this song is an amazing song to kick off an album, any album. The build-up of the song is incredible. It starts off with that insistent beat, slowly, slowly, bringing you up. What I think really brings it together is it's like the essence of Spoon. It really talks about I got a feeling, almost like I've got a feeling the Beatles, it's like Brit Daniel got his own feeling, and it is Spoon. I've got a feeling it don't come free, I got a feeling and then let it get to me. When they don't feel it, it shows they tear out your soul, but when you believe, they call it rock and roll. Some of the best Brit lyrics, it really sums up what he wants out of music and what he wants out of Spoon in, in extension. It, it's so soulful. It, like, you, could, you could tell like when you don't feel it, it shows. You know, he knows that he's got to pour it all in. He's got to put it all there. But I mean, beyond just being lyrically great, the dynamics are amazing. It's got that great like tumbling piano sound where you know the spoon, it's not like piano heavy song, but there's always piano in it. You've got those trickles of piano that just kind of wash in and out. They kind of accent the emotion of the song. It's incredible. And the, the guitar work is kind of like, it's both tuneful and experimental at the same way. Sort of like Wilco or something of the time, or Sonic Youth. The guitar is both used as an instrument of melody, but at the same time, it's also kind of textural. It, it gives this just great energy, spirit to the song. A as it's called the Beast and Dragon Adored, it just sounds like this beast is waking up. It starts off slow and it builds up until it kind of goes into that crescendo where he, it's just a sing along to the crowd. It's a great live song, slept on. It's not a single, you know, it's not meant to be a single. It's meant to set the tone. It sets the tone of Gimme Fiction amazingly. Great song, great way to start the list. Oh yeah, number nine. Number nine takes you back to the second Spoon album, A Series of Sneaks. We've got also the intro song to that, Utilitarian. It is a banger of a song. It, it sounds like Spoon at their most dangerous. I would call the, the riff to it vicious. It sounds like something your parents would want you to listen to. It is definitely much more dangerous than your Spoon playing at target these days or something. <laughs> Definitely more punk rock from them. The song is less than two minutes long. The drums don't even kick in till 30 seconds in. It's literally just that guitar riff for 30 full seconds before it just kicks in. It hits. I mean, it also helps set the tone for a series of sneaks. Very underrated Spoon album. Like Utilitarian, that's only two minutes long. These songs back in the day, they just got in and got out. It is the sound of youth. It is incredible. It's a much different band than it is now. Brit just has the way of just a very simple riff, really taking over a song, and Jimmy knows drums. Even back then, Jim knew his way around a kit. How it just propels the music as soon as the drums start, it's awesome. Some of the best two minutes of Spoon you could get a rush at the start of a series of sneaks. It's a great song. Okay, so number eight is Small Stakes from Kill the Moonlight. Now, you might notice a theme that the other two songs are the first songs from an album, and this is also the first song on an album. I think that just goes to show that Spoon really likes to set the tone of an album and really pack one of the best songs on the album right at the beginning. It really shows the minimalism of the album. That keyboard. Most of the drum is just a simple 606 probably drum, drum machine doing kind of a bass along with just a tambourine and that's the entire song. 
and somehow with just that bare minimum of instruments it has everything it builds and builds and builds and never releases i mean he definitely has the reference to cocaine in the song it definitely kind of feels kind of like that kind of rush and intense feeling that just doesn't release it's just intense it's addictive it's only like two and a half minutes long it is a great live song it, it'll definitely get the crowd pumped up it's it's just one of their best number seven we go to inside out from they want my soul this song should have been the lead single from they want my soul i mean i'm obviously ranking it down here at number seven which really goes to show that they have such good songs that I'm somehow breaking it down at seven. They've talked about making this and how a big influence to them was The Chronic by Dr. Dre, which is an interesting concept. You could kind of hear that how it like hip hoppy it is. It feels like Brit sang to a loop rather than played with the band and they kind of figured out how to play the song. So it definitely does have that hip hop feel, but not in kind of the way you'd pick up as like, you know, run DMC with Aerosmith or something like that. It definitely has that kind of flavor to it, and it's very like bass heavy, rhythm heavy, while just kind of having that treble be kind of echoey and kind of in the background. And it really focuses between the rhythm and an incredible vocal performance from Brit. He just sings his heart out. The feeling in the song, that yearning between the lyrics is ethereal almost. I mean, it's helped immensely by the crazy like harp work in the song. It just makes it seem dreamlike and well, trippy, <laughs> you know? It's trying to bring you to another plane of existence. It's unlike any other Spoon song and that's why it has to be in the top 10. Number six is Black Like Me from Ga 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 Ga. <laughs> I still think that's a very terrible name for an album, but Spoon, I'll let you slide on this one. Black Like Me is a great album closer. It has to end the album. When you hear that song, I don't know what song would go after it. It's kind of in the vein of like a day in the life or a Caroline No. Like once it's over, it just kind of sums up all you've heard before. Black Like Me is one of the great, great slow spoon songs. It shows how dynamic of a band they could be, that they could play dancey numbers. I turn my camera on. Soulful numbers like Inside Out or something like that. Black Like Me is just a classic slow song. And what's great about it is like halfway through, the drums kick in, the piano kicks in, and so it, it kind of uplifts what had been kind of this sad, wistful song and kind of brings this rush of nostalgic feeling to you. It's just this warm rush of air as the band kicks in, I'm in need of someone to take care of me today. The lyrics are just so universal. Who among us at like a show isn't there looking for someone else, something else. Such a great universal feeling. It always gets a big thing where all the weird kids up front tell me what you know you want, someone to take care of the night. It just really brings home ga 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 ga. Man, you just can't say that. Do people just say that out loud? I don't think they do. Anyway, great songs on that album, a great way to close that, and one of their best, bar none. So I think this will be somewhat controversial. At number five, I have Can I Sit Next to You from Hot Thoughts. Now, not, there's not as much love for the new Spoon as there is the old Spoon. I understand they've been around like 20 years. The old fans are always going to be like, you can't put these new songs there. Let me go ahead and try to break down why I think it's top five. I think this is a banger by Spoon. Is Spoon really figuring out how to do a dance song? You can definitely tell Brit talked about how Can I Sit Next to You and Hot Thoughts was made for the live kind of sound. And you can see why. During their tour, it's just fun music to play live. It's hard to get those white kids to dance, let me tell you. They're usually crossing their arms. So if you could actually bust out a song that gets people moving, it's always going to make for a good time. I think Can I Sit Next to You is easily one of the best dance grooves that Spoon did, and it shows how they could do a rock band. But if they wanted to, they could also bust it out and really, uh, <laughs> really get it funky with it, honestly. 
Okay, at number four, we have Do You from They Want My Soul. Do You is the biggest spoon hit that never was. It sounds like a huge hit. It should still be played on radios now as far as I'm concerned. You will hear it pop up at the occasional mall and Target, which I am grateful for. I heard it at Planet Fitness once. It's a kind of a weird workout song to be honest, but it's a great song, so I, I didn't mind. In another world, they would have a top 10 hits, and this shows why. It's just a great, concise pop song. It's breezy. It just sounds so easy. Someone get popsicles. Someone do something about this heat. It just sounds like summer. It's both happy and sad at the same time. It somehow occupies that great medium, which makes a great pop song. It has all this meaning, but it also brings you so much joy, even if it sounds like it came from a place of sadness. The hook, Do You Want to Get Understood? It just sounds so simple, but at the same time, it sounds so universal. Who doesn't want to be understood? Who hasn't ever felt like they weren't understood? Do You is a catchy song, and it's a song that if you hear it at a bank, your mom might even just want to hear it again. Coming in at number three, we've got Lines in the Suit from Girls Can Tell. Classic spoon groove. It's just insistent, that rock beat. You can't call it dancey per se, but it just makes you want to strut. It makes you feel cooler than you are. It sounds just kind of like this nighttime prowl. It just makes me feel cool. First album I heard from Spoon and the sound just brought me to it. It just marries so well with the material of the song. It just sounds like going through the motions at work. That's why it's just like kind of the daily grind every day. The human resource clown takes two cigarettes and then back to work. It could have been more than a wage. Brit has a way with words, a way with just such simple terms of phrases that seems like it applies to everything. It could have been more than a wage. How come you feel so washed up? at such a tender age. Everyone has, has had that feeling of feeling washed up, like they've, they've already been to their pinnacle, they've already done their best. And especially in, in the sense of a job, you're just like, what am I doing? The feeling of the song is just on point. The rhythm is just so iconic, so classic Spoon, and that is why it is a top three. At number two, we have I Summon You from Gimme Fiction. Now this is on Spoon's Greatest Hits, but has the designation, I believe, of being other than No Bullets Left, one of the only songs that wasn't actually released as a single at all. And you can see why. It's definitely a fan favorite type song. It's just a sing-along great song. Classic Spoon. It just builds from that acoustic song and just builds up gently. At like Do You, it definitely kind of sounds like that easygoing acoustic sing-along song that Spoon makes so well. You just feel Brit when you hear the song. You could feel him. It just came out of part of him. He didn't even make the song. It just came to him. It kind of has that kind of feel to it. I love the sprinkly guitars that come in and out, but it is mainly just a showcase of that acoustic guitar and just some insistent drums to keep you going. And it's just meant for a sing-along song. And if you see Spoon Live, you will bet the crowd is singing along to that song. Coming in at number one is The Way We Get By from Kill the Moonlight. Now this is kind of a pseudo Spoon hit. It might be, at least back in the day, was the, the reason people had heard of Spoon. It was featured on the OC soundtrack. It was in the movie Stranger Than Fiction. If you remember that Will Ferrell vehicle, I probably forgot it the moment I saw it. What I do remember about it is that Britt Daniel did the soundtrack to it. He wrote some songs for it, the book I write if I remember, and he does the soundtrack. They tried to make it a big single off based off this movie, didn't really work. The world is sadder for it. To make such an earworm of a song, it's just, it's magic. I wish I heard this song all the time. I, it's such a catchy number. I love how it has the minimalist theme of Kill the Moonlight. What really makes it a Spoon classic is it does everything Spoon does so well in such a short period of time. So it only focuses on one instrument at a time. You hear the piano come in and then that'll drop out and then it'll be on the bass and that'll drop out. And you'll hear the hand claps. The way that like instruments start and stop, it's almost like this mini symphony. If any Spoon album is an album that you need to listen to with headphones on, Kill the Moonlight is that album.
it's incredible. You could get lost in it. You could tell that they just had a great time messing around in the studio, coming up with sounds. You'll just hear new things every time you hear it. That's Kill the Moonlight in general. The way we get by is just the best pop song Spoon has ever written, hands down. It'll stick with you, upbeat, even though it kind of seems like it's a little edgy. It talks about smoking weed. There's a kind of a rap breakdown where he's like, I got a new kind of dance in a magazine. It almost seems like something that's like out of character for them, but it's fun. It brings another element to the song. It's a crowd favorite for sure. There's a reason that every Spoon show will probably have this song. It's just them at their absolute best. So I couldn't give a top 10 without giving two contenders that just didn't make the cut. These are great songs. Both of them end up in the Spoon Greatest Hits compilation with good reason. I Turn My Camera On is one of them. I think Can I Sit Next To You is the better Spoon dance song. So I kind of gave it the upper hand, but I'm sorry, it is knocking at number 11. Everyone loves Brit's falsetto, trying to be Prince. Amazing, not quite top 10. The other one is Everything Hits At Once. Once again, you know about me and the first song on a Spoon album. I love it. I love the sound of the keyboards in that. It sets the kind of noir sound for Girls Can Tell that just sounds like it's this nighttime record. Just close, just right below that top 10. I'm sure in your top 10s, they're, they're, they're probably there. Okay, so you're still watching this, so I decided to do one deep cut. Favorite song that doesn't make the top 10, but is still a great, great song that probably a lot of Spoon fans may not even know of. And that's The Agony of Lafayette. It was originally released after Spoon was dropped from their major label. Lafayette is their former A&R man, the guy who got them the record contract. It's got a great story in that it's kind of a breakup song, kind of a middle finger breakup song to this A&R man who brought them into this record world and strung them along. The story is great. It's an interesting contrast that it sounds like love lorn, what could have been song, but it's sung to this professional in their life where they're thinking about how things could have been different if this person like cared about them. But in this sense, it's not an ex-lover, it's this ex-business partner of theirs. It's got such an amazing melody. I love where they bring it home with the glockenspiel at the end. It's one of the best Boone B-sides and it deserves a little bit more love. Now I feel like I can't do one of these videos without giving a good hot take for someone. So we have to say what I think is the most overrated Spoon song. It's the rent I pay. It just kind of sounds like the same thing over and over to me. It sounds like they had a riff and they just kept going with it. It doesn't have the kind of dynamics you see from a Spoon song. I think what they tried to go for is a kind of gritty live sound of kind of their old material. I think it never really gets off the ground. Feel free to tell me why I'm wrong. I don't think it deserves to be on their Greatest Hits album when they have so many good songs. That seems like it came off a little bit harsh. I don't hate the song. I just don't think it's one of their best. So that was undeniably the top 10 best Spoon songs. So how'd I do? Do you agree? Do you disagree? What's your favorite Spoon song? Do you really like Ren I Pay? Let me know. I'd love to hear from you. I'll be doing more of these. Let me know what artist you want me to rank as well. I'll be reading those comments. I'll be giving you plenty more opinions soon. So I hope you stick around. Thanks for watching. I mean, I've seen people end it like that, but... Get the maracas! Get them! Get them. Oh.